Welcome to the Poke It podcast with me, Nicola Cairncross, and my co-host, Pete Jenkins. In the show, we'll be getting deeply interested in everything and everyone, including business and entrepreneurship, investing, crypto, great films, books, and sci-fi, served up with great food and wine, and a little bit of gamification and the odd guest thrown in for good measure. You can join in the conversation anytime at the Poke It podcast private group on Facebook. Now let's see what we're going to be poking at today, shall we? But hello, Pete. Welcome. Hello and welcome. I, it's probably yeah. because I've got next week off. But Is it? We were trying to squeeze uh, an episode in in the middle. We were. <laughs> now you're not looking twenty years older, so I thought we'd. Uh, you know, I know you've had a, a, a very um, intense week, haven't you? So yeah. what, let's just talk about that, shall we? Let's just talk about your conference and and what you've learned and what happened and all that good stuff. Like a debrief. Yes. Um, well, so I mean, I'm still digesting it and uh, recovering. So actually, this is probably quite a useful mental exercise today. But last week, I ran an online conference for five days in a row um, by myself <laughs> with um, five hours of content each day. Well, <clears throat> five, a five-hour event, shall we say, each day with about four hours of presentations. So overall, about 50-something I haven't even counted 50 something speakers yeah. to, to liaise with and organize, you know, including panel sessions, keynotes, lightning talks, all sorts of different things, all in an online conference platform, all with people, speakers delivering sessions from far flung places like Indonesia, Egypt, um, and, and people dialing in from Brazil, Mexico, South Africa, all over the place. Tell us, tell us the name of the conference and tell us what it's all about. And um, when you say it like that, it sounds like an absolutely monstrous, enormous undertaking. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I think it was. <laughs> like gamification Europe. Okay. So, I mean, we've mentioned this in a few previous podcasts, but in essence, I have run for years um, Gamification Europe. Physically, it started in Brighton in 2017, and we had people flying in from all over the world to attend in person. And then we moved it to Amsterdam the next year, and then Berlin in last year. And then obviously because of COVID this year, uh, we had to do something different. Yeah, I mean, looked at doing- You did last, didn't you? Yeah. Well, do you know what, at the beginning of the year, I mean, we start organizing it in about March each year. So we knew something was up in March. And at that point, people were saying, oh, I, you know, it will clear up over the summer. But I wasn't convinced. Mm. So but I was looking at doing like a hybrid event. So with mostly online with a few small events happening around the place in person. Yeah. Um, but something like eight weeks ago when the second lockdown happened, we immediately cut off the hybrid element and just went purely online. Yeah. Um, which was, a, you know, a few less things to organise, thankfully. Uh, what else to say about that? One of the things that's nice is about taking it online <clears throat> is I was looking to build, to use uh, leverage like the cheaper platform. It's a lot yeah. cheaper to, to host a bit of software than it is to hire a large hotel or conference venue. Yeah. So I, I was my plan was to go for smaller ticket prices to expand the size of the community this year. And then when we go back to in-person events, we'll have a bigger community to draw upon, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. Although, you know, the way I read the situation, I suspect next year's might be virtual too. And right, yeah. So what what possessed you to think you could do all this by yourself <laughs> with no tech and admin mm -hmm. help? Uh, well, the honest truth is just control freak hates delegating, so I yeah. end up doing some of it myself anyway. Um, but you know, there's always a little suspicion that all that stuff you delegated to three members of staff last year, how hard could it be? Yeah, how, how, how hard could it be? One person working three times as hard should surely be able to do it. Exactly, should be fine, shouldn't it? Also, yeah. I was quite interested um, in documenting and building a lot more processes for it. Yes. This year. And have you been doing that? Right. stuff straight from my head. It was like, all right, what do I, what can I automate? What can I make happen and make sure I don't miss stuff? So I was doing quite a lot of um, building stuff that would make, that actually will make it a lot easier next year. Right. 
Yeah, I could just hit replay on some of it. And I can see where there were gaps as a result. So it, it was part experiment. Yeah. And see, seeing where it was. But for instance, with that many speakers, there's a lot of processes. Yeah. You know, I had a, every time I signed up a new speaker, there were 14 steps of follow up stuff to do from creating the web page, finding their bio, their picture, um, fine tuning the talk title and the talk description, setting up an interview, uploading that interview online, sharing everything on social media. I mean, I'm, I'm not even breaking those steps down in this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's they're just high level steps as opposed to detail steps. Yeah, um, and then uh, to call for speakers, I've got a form set up so that triggered some stuff to create these actions. So at first, it would just add it into a system, and then later on, I was like, oh, I'm missing stuff. So then I had to add in some extra automation to create that list in my to-do list automatically. And yeah, and do you need any really software for the whole project management? Sorry. Were you using any specific software for the whole project management? I decided, I mean, this is classic, isn't it? This is, because I already paid for Microsoft Office 365, I thought, right, it should have all the tools. I'll build the whole lot in that. So, um, you know, so for instance, I mean, I, the website is in WordPress, but everything else was in the Office 365 system. Yeah. Pretty much. So when a, a new speaker submitted, they submitted in a Microsoft form. That automatically set up and added the data into a Microsoft list, which displays in Microsoft Teams quite nicely. And then eventually I was using a Microsoft Flow or Power Automate, I forget what they call it, to add to-do items to my Microsoft to-do list. Oh, okay. So that, that should that all was quite automated then. It is, I mean, it's getting there now. It wasn't yeah. to begin with. There, there, yeah. there were elements. Every element I added made life a little bit simpler. Oh, now, okay. And I know what I would do next year is um, – Increase the amount of automation to like pump that data straight into WordPress as well to create draft speaker pages, things like that. Wow. Okay. So you can really do a lot now, then. I think so. So <clears throat> I maybe I wasn't ambitious enough in the beginning this year because I thought, oh, I'll just copy and paste. That'd be easy. Yeah. But actually, with 55 speakers, everyone needs tweaking. What, what would be better would be auto creation of the speaker page, send them a link. And then, of course, they want to correct it. Yes. Yeah, a bit more empowering the speakers might have been useful. Yeah. And then um, we were running ads up to the day. How how did you go? Did you set any targets for sales or did you have anything in your head that you want, you know, that would be a great um, amount of sales to make? I know it was t entirely experimental being entirely online this year, but how did, how did how did the sales go compared with your hopes and expectations? Well, I mean, they weren't as good as my hopes. <laughs> they never are, are they? <laughs> no. You know, my, my hopes were, hey, the platform will cope with 500 people a day. Why don't we aim for that? Yeah, well, that's yeah. fair enough, isn't it? <laughs> but, you know, last year, I mean, admittedly, we had a high ticket price, but I think we had like 140, 150 people, including the speakers, attend in person. So anything above that was going to be good. Yeah. Then I was part cannibalizing my audience because I'd split it into sectors this time. So normally it's just one two-day event. Everything's mixed together. I mean, there's a, there's a flow to it in terms of the type of content, but this time I split it out into different areas like health or marketing or employee engagement or learning and, and so on so there were a lot more people only attending one or two days of the five right um, but you know I, I have got some stats because actually one of the interesting things about doing it online is uh the platform measures loads of stuff for you Oh, okay, cool. And, and yeah. I mean, the actual sort of conference suites, you know, the conference suite software was really quite impressive. If it's the same one you used that you showed me when we were starting to do this. Yeah, it is. It, um, yeah, remo.co. And it worked really well. You know, um, one of the things I've been doing was practicing with small events in it in the run up, which is really a good idea to make you feel comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, but I did do, I got a designer. The only bit of outsource was, a, was design work like look and feel stuff. And yeah. I got a designer to customize some templates for how the conference looks, which worked quite nicely. Uh, so, you know, everything's branded with your logos and it's a slightly different feel because I had two rooms set up. So I had a, like a lounge area where people could go and network and chill out. And that looked more space spacious. 
Sorry, sorry. And, and how did the actual people look on the screen? You know, if I, because I, I, I know you sent me a, a thing, but I didn't actually, I had something that come up. That so how did it actually look? To, so basically, you know, you've, got you were, of, you've got a bunch of tables. Yeah, and, I remember uh, that. Next to each table, you've got like a profile picture for each person where they've set themselves oh, okay. up, otherwise, an initial, something like that. And then if you click on a table, then you join basically a mini Zoom meeting of just the people on that table. Okay. So from a networking point of view, it works really well. So I like that. And then one of the things I like about that platform so much is when you've got a speaker due to start, you just click one button and it drags everyone from the tables to watch the speech. Whereas in a real conference, you're always herding people. Come on, back yes. to the main room. Yes. Back to the main yeah. room. Whereas it's just a click of a button, man. It's Starting so in five minutes, <laughs> 15 minutes, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, hard work. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So, and, so, and so you didn't have more than one speaker talking at once, do you? You didn't have, like, you know, uh, different breakouts rooms or anything. At I the didn't same time. have multiple tracks. That's what we call it. Multiple tracks. That's what they're called. Yeah. yeah. I, spread, I spread the multiple tracks across five days. Mm. That was my my. I think that's a more better way to do it because I was. I mean, I went to something in San Diego where there was a, it was a, a traffic and conversions event, and and they had multiple tracks, and and it was often clashes. You know, where I wanted to see more than one speaker at the same time. My experience as a speaker at conferences is there's generally one talk I really want to go and see, and it's always the one on at the same time yeah. as me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so how? Know. So you were sitting in your living room, yes. sort of like a Machiavellian, right yeah, Machiavellian, right there, a Machiavellian knob twiddler kind of thing. And mm -hmm. and how did how did you feel when it was coming up to the the moment of start? start and and how did it go on the knob twiddler? Okay, so how did it feel? Hectic, because I left ticket sales running till just before the start of each event each day yeah yeah so uh, and that bit wasn't fully automated so anyone who bought a ticket i had to manually do something and add them into the, the platform system <laughs> and and everybody always buys at the last minute don't they did you did you have a last minute run so to, to, here's a really interesting thing that i learned during this week we sold a third of the tickets since it started on day one okay. <gasps> really a third yeah. A third. I mean, with, with live events, you generally say you sell half your tickets in the last two weeks. But that yeah. really is cutting it fine, isn't but it? It picked up a week before, but a third of the paid-for tickets, as opposed to people with sponsors sending in you know, lists and whatever, happened during the event. Yeah, And I would have sold more, but I cut it off each day at the start of the day, whereas I was getting because... the occasional requests, like, oh, I want to join. And I was like, oh, we're two hours in already, and I'm busy. So no. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours in. What's the yeah. matter with people? <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I, next year I will automate it, and they, they can just buy a ticket and get a login, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll sell another five or six tickets a day. You know, yeah. just whatever. You know, a percentage of the number of tickets we've got. Yeah. But you know that that third makes quite a difference to the profit for the whole event because everyone yeah. wants profit. Yeah. Of course, okay. yes, and your profit and your break even must be much lower. Yeah, obviously not in terms of your time. If you counted your time in, then that. No, let's not count my time. time. Sorry, I missed that. I said let's not count my time. There were some no. very long days in the run-up. <laughs> and um, yeah, so let's not count your time. So okay, so you're you're up to the minute when you're ready to press a button. And is are, are people sort of gathering in the software ready to ready to be let in? And can you see them? So that's an interesting one. So the way the platform works is attendees just have a, a wait screen until it opens, okay? So yeah. And you can't see them. But anyone you set up as a speaker or a presenter can log in early. So yeah. I would log in about 20 minutes early. I'd have a word with my chair for the day, whoever that would be. And there'd be a few other speakers gathering, a couple of really, you know, a few people who missed the technology test day. Can I quickly check my presentation? That sort of thing. And in 20 minutes, I'd sort out all the morning speakers, basically, as well. And then, um, unlike some some platforms, there's a different. You can start this off in different ways. Okay, so often when people use Remo, the platform, they want people to come in, sit around the tables, and start chatting, which is great for your extroverts, but not so good for your introverts who are just yeah. wanting to, to talks. 
So the way I ran it was it started promptly and we had the speaker, the chair and me on the stage to begin with. I would introduce the chair and then disappear. And then five minutes in, first presenter starts. So everyone's just joining and immediately, it's like they're coming into the room, it's, the talk is happening and they go. Um, but it's great when you can see the numbers just ticking up of all mm. the people live. And then mm. it's nice because it's, inst- it's almost, as it takes about 20 seconds from when it kicks off and then they're trickling in and then you're off and running. And then, and then, so once your your chairman took over, then you you didn't have anything to do except make sure everything was running smoothly. I, I like that, yeah. That's, but no, it was constant. So <laughs> people are doing that. There's sponsors asking for stuff. There's sponsors asking for, you know, I sell, I sell a sponsorship package. It will be for a speaker, but also, hey, t- here's ten tickets to give to your customers, potential customers. All of them sent them after the conference started. Good God. Yeah, so you've got to add those. You've got to look after your sponsors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're constantly listening to the current speaker because there's technical issues because they're dialing in from all over the place. Right. The very first speaker was calling in from Indonesia. Um, Actually, the 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 connection was poor, but what the platform seemed to do was prioritise the sound. Okay. And the speaker can't tell that is poor connection. So we just told them ignore what you see on the screen, just keep going. Yeah. And yeah. that worked all right, actually, because this and we're still sharing their slides and things. That works fine. Yeah. Good. And and presumably the whole platform was recording each each speaker. Yes. So I had to re- my job because oh. I kick off every session was to hit record. Oh god, the re- responsibility. <laughs> it does remind you. So do you want to record this? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and I said yes. And, and as far as I can tell, having done a quick check, I remembered every single one. Well, that's good. <laughs> um, oh, you would think you'd be able to, you know, you would think you'd be able to just leave a speaker speaking and then go off and have a comfort break or whatever. But actually, it was really difficult. There was a constant need to answer questions in the chat from, you know, people with technical difficulties, attendees doing stuff. Um, questions from the chair. Do I let this person go on a bit? It looks like they're overrunning. I'm yeah, like, yeah. And sometimes I'm like, no, we've got to stick to time. And sometimes I'm like, well, everyone's enjoying this one. Go for it. You know? Yeah. But a few times we had to go straight through a comfort break, stuff like that, mainly because of technical issues, actually. If it took two or three minutes extra to start someone off because they couldn't share the screen or something like that, then that time has to come from somewhere. It sounds absolutely horrendous in terms of in terms of the fear factor and, and the um, – stress of trying to get everything sorted out on on the hoof as it were yeah although it's it's the same stress as an in-person conference yeah i'm sure um also there's less factors to worry about i don't have to worry about catering oh that's true there's a lot lot less to think about yeah with the no, all i have to worry about is uh the presenters what were the key one the key things that go wrong that went wrong uh classics were time zone so oh, right uh, I had a speaker completely miss their slot because they missed they misunderstood it by an hour. Um, all the rest where we had time zone issues because of that first one, I was on the phone saying, "You don't appear to have logged in yet, and you're due on in five minutes." And they're like, "Oh, oh, I thought it was this afternoon. I'll uh, I'll finish my meeting." <laughs> The, the longest infill I had to do for that was 10 minutes. So you have to be prepared to, to just leap in and do Step stuff. Step in and improvise. Yeah. Do you know, and um, the hardest one was actually the very last session was a panel session. And the panel session chair was logged in, could hear us, but nobody could hear or see him. Oh, God. Right, And it had worked earlier in the day. Yeah. You know, the classic. So, I mean, I knew a bit about the topic because obviously I'm aware of everyone's talk. But I had to sort of wing it and do the interview. Of, oh, and, and a panelist was missing, missing because of a time zone issue. So suddenly it was instead of a panel session chair and two panelists from Nestle, it was me and someone from Nestle um, talking about a subject where I wasn't really aware of the questions that were planned. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, So in balance, then, do you think it went well? Did the att- what kind of feedback are you getting from the attendees? So I sent out, um, I mean, throughout the process, 
well, I was getting anecdotal feedback, obviously, and, and mm -hmm. when I was hanging out in the networking, I was like, how's it going? What was your favorite session? That sort of thing. And uh, generally speaking, people seem to quite like the focus each day on a different sector. Yeah. Uh, although also, most people don't like the whole five-day idea because they actually want to attend everything. Oh, right. Five days is tough. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, I mean, those are the super keen, super passionate gamification people. They're like, five days is too long because they want to be at everything. For so everyone would, else, would they want three good. days? Two uh, days? Well, so normally they say on the in-person one, they're either happy with two or three days. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I, I just, this I thought five days was all right because it wasn't a whole day. It was five hours, which gives you, I mean, it didn't give me, but it gives you potentially as an attendee still three or four hours of your working day. So you could fit it in. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose if diff people are in different time zones, they you know it's in their evening or in their morning, or they they could go on and do a a, fu a full day. But surely this counts as work, doesn't it, for the people for the attendees? Yeah, yeah. And no, no, it's just that work potentially gets in the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how do you feel about it now? It's over, and you know, obviously, you've said you'll probably do another one. So I mean, has it given you any ideas or? Have you made any good contacts? Tell me, tell me all sort of the outcomes for you. Have I made good contact? I've no idea about the good contacts yet. Because <laughs> <laughs> because that happens in the sort of post conference follow up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've sent out a survey form. I've had like twenty something responses already. I only sent that two days ago, on a weekend, and it's a long form. There's sixty nine questions because it was a big conference. It was a big conference, right? So there's like some general questions and specific questions about each day. And so extra questions about the after party, you know, stuff like that. Um, but generally speaking, the feedback seems to be pretty darn good. We've got a question about what do you prefer in an online conference? And another one about what did you like least about an online conference? And generally speaking, it, it's people like the online conference format for lots of flexibility reasons, for picking and choosing what they watch. Mm. Um, it was a faster pace than an in-person conference. So a lot of people quite like that. Mm -hmm. And there's some minor feedbacks that I noticed by the end of day one. That was like, well, I would do that differently. But of course, I was committed to certain elements of the conference by that point. Um, yeah, all in all, pretty good, I think. Um, what else? So over the five days, I issued 788 tickets which is like, so potentially divide that by five, yeah, for, for, a, for a day. Um, but it turned out that was like, <laughs> the speakers weren't quite in the stats because of the platform measured attendees and I had a lot of people registered as speakers. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> it was roughly, no, it was exactly 306 attendees plus speakers as unique people attending my conference, which was oh. more than double previous years well 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 done God, okay. that's amazing um what was really interesting for me was like we had 640 attendees registered to attend on various days uh, some of those are duplicates yeah same person oh. on multiple days yeah only 424 turned up of the 640 so basically you've got 220 people across five days so 40 people a day who had a ticket probably paid for who didn't log in at all but are they waiting for the recordings? There's a few, but the rest just no mention. If you know what I mean. Because anyone yeah. asked about the recordings, I told them that, yeah, we release them, but like one a week afterwards. Yeah. So it'll be a long time till you see them all. <laughs> but I do often register for things in the expectation that I'll get the recording. But you'd think, yeah. they'd, you'd think they'd have shown up at least one day to one session, wouldn't you? Yes. That's what I'm saying. So, so I mean, my challenge for next time is to increase that number. Who actually turns up? Yeah. Um, of those who did turn up, the average length of engagement, because this was measurable, was yes. three point one six hours. Wow, so, that's really good. There's at least three, at least three presentations each. Then, on average, actually more, because of the five-hour conference, there was just under four hours of presentations. So, because there was an hour's lunch break slash mm. networking break, which most people just disappeared off from because they're online why yeah. not yeah um and that was pretty similar every single day 
Wow. The only day with a lower engagement per attendee was the last day. And I think it's because it was a Friday rather than any other reason. So they, the they were just slacking. <laughs> Yeah, or you know, wrapping stuff up for the week, or just not able to attend as much. Yeah, yeah. And now, and now, what happens? What I mean, what happened when you press that button to close it all down? How did you feel then? And and did you have a great meal planned and and some wine, or what did you do? <laughs> you just lay on a sofa I, in a dark room. <laughs> I um. So after the event, I had another room set up, which would be open for another two hours for people to go and network in. Really? You're a glutton for punishment, aren't you? <laughs> well, yeah, but I only, jo I only join for like 20 minutes each day. Yeah, yeah. I had other stuff to do to prep for the next day as the only organiser. But it was oh, there. Yeah. Most people only stay for about half an hour. Yeah. Like, but because of the online format, they've been there all day. And then on Friday, there was an after party arranged in a game, which I'd already decided not to attend myself because I played that game a week and a bit ago. It's really good. And if I'd had time, I would have done it. But actually, yeah. I, have, I have a three-hour workshop every other friday so i had a 20-minute break and then did a workshop jeez <laughs> you mad thing i did cut it short to be fair yeah yeah um, and with you know they were fine with that do you do you think it was do, i mean did you feel pushed to the absolute limit or, or did you feel fine or how you know on in terms of workload for you Okay, in the run-up, the last two weeks before the conference, I yeah. was at the limit. Yeah. Absolute limit. Um, they're just – nothing's ever quite finished. That's what's quite frustrating. So I, didn't, I don't think I completed the lineup of speakers officially on the website until – for the last day, until the second day of the conference. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. you've still got stuff, you know, you've got to announce it and put some stuff up. And yeah. There's always little things left undone. Um, which is quite frustrating mm. in some respect because it's all undone things keeping you stressed. Niggling, oh, yeah, niggling. Yeah. Well. yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but I would say, I mean, the hard bit was having a relationship at the same time as working 18 hour days, which came as quite a shock to my partner because she only knew me in the summer when there really wasn't much work. And yeah. A very vibe. Yeah. Uh, which is why we're going on holiday for, in a few days' time for a week. Very nice. We've got to make up for basically not being present. <laughs> well, let's not get into a discussion about relationships because <laughs> that won't go well. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a, it's one of those things. Um, the conference is always quite stressful, but not as stressful when you have a team to delegate. To. Yes. When it's all on your shoulders. Yeah. There are certain things you just do not want to go to bed at night until you've done. Yes, absolutely. And you won't be able to sleep properly. So I, I was yeah. up to like midnight, one, two in the morning, a few yeah. times in the two weeks before. And then starting at seven, you know, poof, let's go again. Um, which means you don't see the other person. Yeah. Really. Or if you do, you can't really see them. Yeah, you've just got a brain full of stuff to think about. Yeah. I mean, totally. I totally understand. I mean, I. It's it's interesting because it's it was one of the my biggest challenges when the kids were little was trying to be um, be able to switch off and be present in what what was going on at the weekends and I found it really nearly impossible. So um, then later on, I had a partner who totally got it and didn't ever expect me to do anything except concentrate on on the work because they you know and that that did make things easier. I think mm -hmm. definitely, but you know, everyone's different, and everyone you have to you you know you're you're with who you're with, and you have to try and make it work, don't you? Yeah. Well, also, I think in this case, it was just a bit of a shock to the system yeah. compared to what yeah. it had been like before. Yeah. Well, so do you think you'll be getting help next time? You'll be having at least one admin assistant, I hope. Mm, I don't know. Oh, I could do a lot more automation, and but also I'm going to start it a lot earlier. What the, getting the prep done? Yeah. Yeah. Because, and, because and, once you've automated some of this stuff, um, I mean, I, I put, you know, the summer was too much fun in some respects. So I did put off starting it. Yeah. Later yeah. Than I should have done. But actually, in an online world, I'm not entirely sure what will stop me just announcing the dates for next year right now and starting ticket sales. 
Yeah, starting to prep already. Yeah, but people do leave it to the last minute. I mean, I'm you know I'm the worst. I'm I'm often sort of tweaking my slides when I'm on the plane. So the the organizer will ask you to send your presentation in, and I'll do it. But then I'll all you know I'll walk in with a memory stick and want to do the, the you know the latest changes. So that's the thing I completely forgot was to ask the presenters for a copy of their presentation. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, because I'm so used to doing presentations I, I you know i know i'll have changed it a day before but i also yeah. know i'll be able to make it work yeah um but obviously not everyone is a professional speaker so no that's true but we did have it go wrong a couple of times and one time for the longest talk of the conference funnily enough the speaker just couldn't share their slides so they emailed them over to me it took a little while to download and then i was doing the whole she was like next slide click and unfortunately it was one of those presentations where there's multiple animations on a slide. So yeah. Click, click, click. click. Forever to lows. Well, no, it was just a lot of her having to ask, like next, click next, click next, click next. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. I've only ever done one, one presentation when I had to tell the boy to the, the back of the room, you know, on the sound desk yeah. to, to click because my, my clicker wasn't working. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, I've seen it a lot. I mean, it's a, it's a classic that happens at a live conference. Yeah. yeah. The batteries run out or the range is actually too great. And oh, it, that could have been it actually yeah that could have been it entirely but you just have to make a joke of it don't you and the audience goes with you and i think they they the audience is, is nice. yeah. yeah they're supportive yeah but but it is you know i so, was supposed to be doing something else at that point but for 40 minutes i was just really literally a button pusher <laughs> so overall now you've had a few days to get over it a little bit give us a score on the success front score okay so um Thorough success. It made money. It made people happy. The feedback is good. The sponsors seem happy. Um, you doubled your reach, so that's great. Doubled the reach, and it was more engaging than I suspected. So, because I mean, I've attended quite a few online conferences, and I've watched people dropping out constantly through them because yeah. some of them are pretty boring. The fact that we managed an average of three hours engagement out of four every single day. Yeah. I think it's actually really impressive. Yeah. And I'd love to know how it compares to other conferences. And and you've got to have, I mean, seeing the 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 sheer numbers of interviews you did before and constantly, you know, putting new stuff on your page. And you, you must have a really good feel now for what people engaged with the most, who people responded to. Your page um, must have got more attention. I mean, I haven't even looked to see if you've, your page likes have gone up. Have I don't even know if they have or if that matters anymore. So I think it does matter. Um, one of the interesting ones was on LinkedIn, the conference page for LinkedIn. I think we started this run up with about 400 follows on our LinkedIn page for the conference, and we're now oh. at 1,200, something like that. So, wow. it's super so what's that, a three times increase? 300%? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the difference is on the Facebook page, actually, because I don't know where it shows the total. <laughs> Well, we can we can have a look at that afterwards <laughs> or another time. But um, yeah, um, well, that's I have no idea what that is. I mean, yeah. in terms of traffic to the website, it went from a usual one thousand hits a month or you know a unique sessions a month to something like twelve thousand over the yeah. past thirty days. Some of that is the ads. Yeah. Some is that natural. I mean, well, what was really interesting? Running ads. Really hmm? Running. running for, let me say it before I forget it. I keep meaning to say to you, running ads. Um, out it. it some of your ads go outside the network as well, although I tried to keep it inside the network as much as possible, the sites it goes out to. But at the beginning, definitely, we were we were boosting the videos. It does definitely increase search engine optimization running ads. I know that. Sorry, you were about to say? I was about to say, what was really interesting was comparing the Facebook ad campaign you were running with me and LinkedIn as a source of um, natural traffic. Yeah? Okay. So didn't do any paid stuff on LinkedIn, but put quite a lot of effort into the posts that were being shared, tagging every speaker, all that stuff. It was the yeah. only platform out of all of them which had every single speaker on it. Yeah. So Facebook, you can't necessarily find people. Instagram, you can't necessarily find them all. Yeah. The consistency was on uh, LinkedIn, and LinkedIn generated more traffic than the Facebook ads campaign just from this natural. Wow! Traffic. Really? That's incredible. But it was a lot of effort, yeah, as opposed to the. But you know, they've just started LinkedIn ads that look like Facebook ads now. 
I don't know how long that's been going because I'm not an I'm not a LinkedIn expert or even a user to be honest. But um, that's definitely got to be worth looking at. Um, and and that only seemed to go higher and higher as we got more follows on our page and things like that. So, yeah, well, it would do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also, pretty sure it drove some of the ticket sales during the conference. Yeah, because people were sharing on LinkedIn almost yeah. as much as on Twitter. To be fair. Brilliant. And so, what you mustn't do now is let that LinkedIn page become a complete wilderness of nothing no new content between now and the next one so i hadn't finished doing all the interviews go oh, great okay so um what i've already agreed is with all our sponsors because they were disorganized most of them haven't had their interview is we'll do a post event interview how did the conference go for you the talk who did you meet that sort of thing mm -hmm. so we'll have some extra content coming around from that and we'll be uploading the videos once they're edited they all need editing yeah, of That's course. One of the do. interesting things about record, we've recorded everything, but they're not just ready to just straight upload. No, um, and and the good thing about having the um, uh, sponsors talking about what what the, you know why they signed up to be a sponsor and then what happened as a result of that, that that some of those will be able to naturally act as testimonials for encouraging sponsors next time. Absolutely. Yeah. Quite yeah. agree. Good yeah. stuff. So. Oh. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of content to come. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good because we'll have a week off first. Yeah, absolutely, totally. Well, I mean, I'm really, really, really pleased it went so well for you. I mean, you were working, you know, working like a dog, and uh, it's just brilliant that it went so well. Well done. I'm pleased. Yes, yeah. I should think so. <laughs> and also, having done it beforehand, I couldn't really picture what I needed to automate, where things would make the most difference. Yeah. Now I know. Yeah. Actually. At the very least, I can. <clears throat> oh my god! I, I'm sure I could easily halve the effort for next year with yeah. a bit of thought about how to automate, but also spread it out over a longer period so it's not quite such a long, intense days in the build-up. Yeah. The and the days itself, I quite enjoyed. I mean, one day I even did the organising and the chair of the day role because I hadn't filled that day, and actually that went all right. If anything, it was a bit easier because I was completely with it and yeah. understanding. Yeah. And able to do the infill without having to brief someone else. Like, oh, you can let this one overrun. Yeah. Um, but I, I did notice I couldn't do that the next day. I was completely drained. Luckily, I had a different chair who took the the brunt of like the energy. You have to pour yeah. so much energy into the it screen. Is. Yeah, absolutely. And people don't realize that. And that's why you, you crash so often when you've gone to do a big presentation out in the big wide world, because it takes such a lot of adrenaline to hype yourself up to, to give a good performance. It is a performance. Yeah. I'm mean, have... planning to do the chairing of the last day myself. But after the doing the middle day, I was like, oh, actually, do you know what? I've got no energy. It wouldn't be good. Mm. So I, I actually recruited one of the most active participants and uh had been on one of the panel sessions on the first day and he'd been turning up every day consistently and i was like ah passion of the industry yeah would you, and a bit of stage presence would you like to chair the last day and he's like oh yeah so, yes. fantastic fantastic can you um have you got any screenshots of what it looked like in 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 progress i've got i <sighs> ish I was taking some to share on Twitter, but I was cropping them all to just show the speaker and their slides each time. Okay. I just I was wondering, you know, a couple of screenshots, if you've got them, would be great to put in the notes of this episode so that people can, um, or links to them, just so that people can see what we're talking about and what it looked like on screen. Not a bad idea. I'll okay. see what I can dig out. All right. No hurry, obviously, Pete, because now. But well, this no, one... I mean, it, it's not over. Uh, right now, you've got the people asking, can I get a copy of the slides when yeah. they go up? So I'm yeah. collating all the all the information from each speaker. They've got slides, useful links they shared um, with 50-something speakers across five days. How, how am I going to format that and send it out? I haven't quite finished thinking that through. Um, could you make them into blog posts on your I don't really want to give access to people who didn't go. No, good point. Yeah. Although so I was you, thinking about that. It would make sense as a blog post. To see. You could password protect them. I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. right now, obviously, I haven't received it from every single speaker. Yeah, so I need course, to look yeah. an update. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, that's great. I mean, that was a, a very good poked virtual conference <laughs> to see how it goes. 
it, it's great to to do it straight after actually as a sort of um what do they call it in the army an after action report yes yeah when we're you know my best tip for anyone running a virtual conference is wireless headphones because that enables you to go and take a comfort break yes you're not um, missing anything well yeah, as long as you turn them off yeah yeah so so i'm um, as organizer you're uh with this platform it's quite nice if you're muted and your camera's off you're not on the stage if you're not then you're on the stage and someone's saying oh you get off <laughs> so, yeah. so you're pretty confident yeah because <laughs> that was every time i went for a comfort break that some sort of crisis happened so <laughs> knowing it and hearing it meant by the time i came back i was ready with an answer psychologically yeah. prepared <laughs> Oh God! Well, thank you very much for for pitching up and, and telling us all about it. That was brilliant, and uh, we'll be back to our normal format next week. Of well, not next week. We have a week break, weeks break now, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Cool. So, uh, but what have you been up to for the past week? I have I'm been doing. Honestly, it's no good asking me stuff like that. I haven't. I, I can never remember anything, even if I have done anything. It's no well, going. I'll, I'll start you off. You, you've probably been um, enjoying the volatility of the crypto market. Oh, yes. Oh, I, yes. I missed, I mean, I missed a, an amazing amount of money because I was so busy with the conference. I, well, I just, I, I I got stuck in a trade because I didn't put a stop loss in. Um, I was waiting to put the stop loss in until it had moved up enough of a gap that it didn't drag back the price. Because sometimes if you put, you know, if the market is illiquid, then you can put a stop loss in and it's too close and it drags the price back down. Um, and so I, I was just waiting till it had gone up that little bit more. And then, of course, boom, and uh, missed. Well, I was just trapped in the trade because I didn't want to crystallize my losses. So um, so I just I just I knew it would come back up again. It has, in fact, today, today it's right back up again. So I'm just um, looking to put a, a stop loss in any minute now. So uh, as long as you as long as you don't need the money, which you shouldn't be trading with money you need anyway then um it doesn't really matter you just wait you have to be patient yeah, the, the bit that annoyed me was like one day i, I had some ethereum it was uh -huh. up 30 something percent and it was a nice chunk of money and i was like ah oh, should i sell now and then i got distracted by the conference obviously and then it, it you know then it was only up 10 percent yeah Still profit, you know if, if i hadn't seen it in the gap i wouldn't care yeah yeah there but um, work you know slack which which is software i actually use yeah. myself and of course for loads and loads of people use it for all it's just absolutely brilliant i love it um got up something like over 100 percent or 108 percent or something it's just in in one day it was just unreal the earnings report came out and of course their earnings report was up dramatically because they acquired so many new customers massive green candle on a couple of days i'm looking forward to see what it's seeing what it does today because i've never looked at the american well it's not it's only just open now but uh, yeah no it's been an exciting week for sure and and i think once we get to 20k because um we have already hit an all-time high in the uk but uh when when it goes over 20k because that's the price that people remember it going to even though it didn't close at 20k yeah. only close close much lower than that um then we'll really start to see some fireworks i think but my my um cleaning lady today was telling me that she started um buying stocks on something 212 oh i don't know that one it's like eToro. It's it's a sort of trading. I think it's called Trading Two One Two or something. Anyway, she she opened an account with them because she wanted to get some vouchers for a free free meal somewhere, and her one pound that she'd opened the account with is up to up to nine pounds now. So she was trying to explain it, to me and I was thinking, oh, it sounds like the market top's coming to me. <laughs> <laughs> and if well, you know, they, say, they say don't they when big when taxi drivers start to talk to you about bitcoin it's time to get out <laughs> so, so um no, she's, true anymore but yeah I, I know what you mean it's about that, that sort of trend isn't it yeah just when it becomes talked about by lots and lots of people um but we'll see what happens so what else has happened uh uh no, I totally can't remember my brain. My brain, because unless I write it down, Pete, I can't remember it. I'm okay. at that stage of life. You'd, you'd finished your five day challenge. Oh, we think about well, that last time, I think. Okay, this is what I spent the last week doing. I spent the last week trying to get my um, my book, Attract 3.0, which sort of outlines my system, um, into paperback format on Amazon. And it isn't. It wasn't that it was difficult to do at the Amazon end. It was really, really good and easy to do at the Amazon end. But trying to get the right format, 
up. I mean, I, sometimes I've done this effortlessly, but this time trying to go from a Kindle format to a paperback format was really, really tricky. Mm -hmm. And I had to have multiple attempts at it. And every time you do it, upload it again, it has to process it. And then you have to go in and check the cover looks okay. Because if you have different pages, different page amounts, the cover has to change. And then sometimes that didn't work and you had to wait for that to process. And it was just endless last week. Finally got it onto paperback version. And now I've got a funnel set up that is Facebook ads, which are working yeah. at the moment, um, driving traffic to a free book offer where on the, on the page they can actually choose to download the ebook for free or they can go to buy the paperback. And then once they land on the thank you page, they get the offered the five, next five day challenge for free, which is fantastic if it all works, because it will be paid for traffic coming in, creating leads, turning into challenges um, and also um, becoming bot subscribers so that I can notify them, you know, when we go live on the podcast, for example, and every time someone clicks yes to go through to some to say they want to hear from us again you get to notify you get a, a permission to notify them again about the next live event so you can only um, on bot messengers it's very much so um in control of the person concerned which is how it should be and so that's that's what i've been doing all week <laughs> all of that okay so, so the paper is a print on demand is it it's print on demand yes but but hopefully with this steady flow of traffic going through and if and I know that if I can get 100 people on my challenge, I'm going to convert X number to sales because yeah. um, I've done a few challenges now. So I know how much I'm prepared to pay for a lead, which means I know how much I'm prepared to pay for a click. So this is the kind of funnel we need to set up for you. One, you know, once you've, you're over all this, obviously, because then, you know, you can go to digital courses and you've, I know you've got digital courses in the pipeline. So yeah. Yeah. is there a book in the offing? There well, should be, shouldn't there? And, yeah. and there is, but <clears throat> I, yeah, next year's job is to give myself the time to write that book. Right. You know? Or to write an outline of the book, which then becomes a white paper report, which you give away for a lead. As long as it's got some value in it. I, well, I already know what I want to write, so I hope okay. to do it. So. Okay. All right. So people could opt in to get the chapters as you complete them oh uh, yeah okay that's a, a known technique isn't it well robert kiyosaki did it and stephen king's done it and charles dickens used to do it and then you could adapt you know the the um, final version based on the feedback you get so they're like they become like beta readers in effect yeah it's an interesting one this book is mostly built around a bunch of interviews with senior yeah we were ceos in large companies doing something interesting and playful culture with their organization oh cool so so it could lend itself to that and then putting it together in a book i mean i've done yeah. the first interview and you know <laughs> it's ten thousand words just as a transcription so <laughs> <laughs> what i've realized is there's a lot of editing to do yeah there is a lot of editing yeah absolutely it's all that stuff that takes a time it's like last week you know I, I was spending just all my time trying to get this thing into the right format and i'm sure someone on fiverr would have been able to do it so much quicker but i'm so impatient i want it done like now so i was actually probably shooting myself in the foot by that because if i'd sent it off to someone and said send it back to me in paperback ready format to upload to amazon they would have known how to do it better than i did but i got there in the end and um yeah, I've, right. I've now got this god for the gods of facebook ads please be merciful on me <laughs> I, I, the only thing is I'm having exactly the same problem we had with your Facebook ads for the conference. I can't see the conversions. Oh, and okay. No, they're coming email. through. On, on, I can see the the my email list host is emailing me that people are opting in, and I don't recognize the names, so they're not coming from my existing list. So I know that I'm getting conversions, but they're not showing up in my report. So I, I spent a good half an hour on um, chat to Facebook Messenger support earlier. But that's what I've been doing. And what are you doing this coming week? Probably much more similar stuff. <laughs> no, we're allowed out soon, aren't we? Is it is it the second we're allowed out? Uh, yeah, so one minute past midnight, something like that. Yeah. Oh, I've also I've also been tweeting my MP, Tim Loughton, rather, 
um furiously trying to i know he's a rebel anyway he's gonna he wants in fact he's i've just got seen an interview with him where he's going to be questioning the um uh they it, they want to see a, a cost benefit analysis um, the, the rebel MPs, there's about 100 of them. They want to find out what, on what basis the government are making their decisions. Oh, for the, the new tiers system. Yes. Well, because the tiers system's worse than the lockdown. So, you know, I can't get excited about going out when I can't, we can't mix more than two households on one table. It's all right mm. for you and me going out for lunch, but not, not that mm. great when the kids want to go out, you know? I mean, we've chosen to go on holiday to another tier two region because we'll be tier two. And that way we just don't have to worry. Just continue as doing whatever you were doing. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're two you're two households as well, aren't you? Yeah. It's very complicated, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyway, we won't talk about that because that's just a real downer. So, <laughs> so good. All right. Well, I think that's us done for the week. So a bit disjointed. Oh, I, wish, I wish that was the case. I still got so much more to do. <laughs> too, so much more to do or so much more to tell. Uh, oh, just to do. I mean, like, all right, I had my conference last week, but I'm speaking at one tomorrow. Which And this one, they wanted pre-recorded sessions as well. So <clears throat> it's kind of like the worst of both worlds. I'm doing a pre-recorded session and then following that with a live panel session. So I might as well have done it live anyway. Yeah. Oh, I much prefer doing it live. It's much yeah. more better energy. Well, I, yeah, I think so. But, you know, I had to build the the slide deck last night, record it today, put the desk in standing desk mode, so at least i got a bit more energy on the yeah, screen. Yeah, I would feel better standing up. Then export that as a nice MP4. That took ages. It took like an hour and a half. For some reason, PowerPoint was just in a go slow today. And then yeah. upload that and then prep some other stuff. And then uh, Wednesday, I'm speaking at an exporting event for the DIT. Um, well, I, mean, I, don't, I, I don't know why I had the impression you were on holiday this week. Well, it's both, on both weeks. I can't on holiday on Thursday. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Got to get everything else out of the way by then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. So you're, you're canter, cantering at full pelt towards your, your, your week off then. Yes, that's right. You know, it's my sister's birthday this week as well. You know, how you've got to work out how you're going to get presents in. Do I get to see them in person at the moment because of lockdown? Do we wave across a six foot gap? What, what's the plan? No, please don't talk. I can't bear to talk about it. It's just so ridiculous, all of it. With silly, silly, silly rules. So, uh, yeah, no, so busy. And then, you know, normally I'd be sending out my monthly newsletter today, but that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Yeah. You just uh, got to do what you can, Pete. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, I'm not, I was absolutely knackered after the conference. It's taken me all weekend to, recover enough for this chat if i'd done this yesterday we'd have it it would have been like, hello nicola <laughs> <laughs> no you've been you've been great your energy levels have been great yeah so it's back now but yeah. oh, got to protect yourself for a week or so after a really heavy stress period that's right yeah all right so that's the plan right well i've got to go now because i've got an, another another podcast interview good luck with that excellent <laughs> see you later bye, <laughs> bye. You're listening to the Poke It Podcast with Pete Jenkins and Nicola Cancross. You can find me at gamificationplus.uk and Nicola at clicksandleads.com.